Yo, yo, it's your boy Fro. And today I'm going to be talking about the November films I watched in 2023. So ain't nothing to it but to do it. First up, we got the 2003 flick The Hunted, directed by the late great William Friedkin. Rest in peace. Now, this one stars two of my favorite actors, Tommy Lee Jones and Benicio Del Toro. This one is a solid student challenges the master type of flick, but in a grittier and darker way. Now, Benicio Del Toro's character is going around hunting people for sport. And uh, Tommy Lee Jones's character is the one pretty much trained him or taught him how to use uh, combat training, etc. with knives and skills. And, and Benicio can play a good creep pretty much any time. So this film I did enjoy. Next up, we got the new 2023 flick, The Burial, starring Jamie Foxx and again, Tommy Lee Jones. Now, this was a film I also had a good time with. Uh, Jamie Foxx is one of my favorite actors. I think he's a top five actor when it comes to technical skill, or at least top ten somewhere in there, just when it comes to transforming into a different person. For example, Ray. I think Ray is one of the best performances of all time. But uh, here, he plays a real guy. Um, um, the name is slipping uh, off my head right now, but he plays a real guy based on a true story, if you will. And he plays this hotshot lawyer, who's a bit out of his element dealing with Tommy Lee Jones' character's case. Now, Tommy Lee Jones plays this funeral homeowner. He's about to sell the rights over to the scumbag. Uh, and not, I would say enemy, but um, competition, if you will. And this movie turns into a courtroom drama, but also two sides mixing together that you wouldn't expect to. And they band together and also become friends along the process. Especially especially when we get toward the finale. So The Burial, I really enjoyed. I thought great acting, um, great moments. I can see if some people would think maybe some of the race stuff in certain movies and the discussions have become either overplayed or a bit cringy. But I didn't have that, uh, I didn't have that experience with this film. Next up, we got another recent film that just came out a few months ago. And this was a film that I was really anticipating after hearing so many great things about it. They said uh, a couple people said this would be right up my alley. But long story short, no one will save you. I found myself to be rather disappointed. We follow a homebody woman that's trapped inside of her house with an alien in the, in the beginning of the film. But the movie does become deeper as we start to have more discoveries. And she's also dealing with personal trauma from herself. And she's trying to reconnect with herself and her feelings, etc. But honestly... I found the aliens in this film to be very underwhelming. I didn't, I wasn't really freaked out or creeped out by them. I thought some of the CGI was rather laughable, but that's just me. Like I, I know a good amount of people who really enjoy this movie, but I have to say I wasn't one of them. And this one, I was actually anticipating rather highly. So that's just my personal thought. Oh man, next up though, we have one of the worst movies of all time. Like, like you can, if you had a hat, with a list of horrible movies and name titles, this would definitely be in a fucking hat. Like, if you pulled out a random name and you were like, oh, Pet Graveyard? What the fuck is this movie? Yes, it's and it's as bad as you think it is. Not only is it really a knockoff from Pet Cemetery, but the title is, the movie is a knockoff of Insidious. Like, what the fuck? What? There's a cat in this movie, but it barely shows up. And, like, there's a graveyard in this movie, but they don't really do anything with it. So this was a fucking fake Timu Wish version of Insidious. Like, straight up. This movie is a waste of time. Nobody needs to watch it. I took the hit for you guys. This movie should have easily been an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and 25 minutes. But it's an hour and, what, 45 or an hour and 50 it was ridiculous. The acting was terrible. This was easily a 1 out of 10 film. Now, I didn't get to watch too many first-time viewings for this month, but I'm going to move on to the rewatches. Nightmare Before Christmas had a re-release in the Regal Theaters, and I got to see it again, and I had a great time. I have always enjoyed this movie. I will admit that, of course, it's extremely creepy, and there's very unnerving and grotesque imagery throughout the film, and it is dark, for sure. But there is a certain quality and a, and a certain uh, feeling to this movie that I really enjoy. Like, despite how dark and creepy 
and grim this movie is, there's also an upbeat kind of feeling to it as well. And I've always felt that. So I do like Jack Skellington. I do like the characters. I love the visuals. I'm not the biggest musical guy, but I have no problems with the numbers in this film. Yeah, I've always had a great time with Nightmare Before Christmas. Next up, we have the 2010 remake of The Crazies, George A. Romero's classic. Now, the updated version done by, I think, Breck Eisner is his name, the director. This movie's dope. Like, I, I kind of slept on this one. In the I seen little parts of it when I was younger, but I don't remember ever finishing it. So, on an adult watch, this rewatch was really awesome. I, I, I thought this movie kicked ass. Really cool characters. It's a really grim and bleak, dark film for sure. And I can see how people find this movie depressing. But I love the characters. I like Timothy Oliphant. I like Radha Mitchell. I like the actors in this film, the cast. And I think everybody does a rather well job. And I am a sucker for practical effects. So there is some bloody violence that does pop off here and there. And the infected and how they look and how they maneuver, I thought was pretty effective. So this film, I had a great time with. The Crazies, I slept on it. And I'm happy to say that I enjoyed it even more on this adult watch. And last but not least for November, this is a rewatch for the thousandth time. I'm a sucker for this movie. I actually really love it. The Kevin Bacon film, Death Sentence, directed by James Wan, the director of Saw, etc., Conjuring, etc. I've always thought Death Sentence kicks ass. Like, this is one of my favorite Kevin Bacon performances, if not my personal favorite Kevin Bacon performance. I think he does a great job going from a very um, timid and very cool family man, business guy, if you will, turning into this stone-cold, vengeful killer with an explosive ending and finale. And we had John Goodman here to throw some really cool one-liners and funny quips here and there. That just adds an even higher rating for me because I'm a big fan of John Goodman. But And he plays a, a scumbag rather well in this movie as well, but there's a very likable quality to him. And I do like Garrett Hedlund as an actor as well. And it's really cool to see him as the villain here playing the lead gang, uh, the leader, Billy Darley. This movie, I've always had a great time. I know some people might not like it. I've heard some people don't rock with Death Sentence, but Fro's opinion, kick-ass movie, and I highly recommend it. But that's it, y'all. It's your boy, Fro. November, I didn't get to watch much. But um, yeah, December, I've already seen two movies already. I'm not going to spoil what they are. But I am going to drop uh, movie reviews coming soon. So check in. Uh, click those subscriber bells because YouTube does me dirty a bit. And other channels as well. They don't let our full audience know when we upload a video. And, for, and you supporting your other channel guys as well. For whoever you're subscribed to. Just make sure to click those bells for the people you want to watch. Because yeah, YouTube can be pretty grimy when it comes to updated views or holding back views and likes etc but yeah that's just my that's a whole different other video thank y'all for watching until next time i'm out fro thizzle peace